I think if I'd gone on with the keynote presentation, I would have begun to talk more about what I am specifically doing, because I was talking in general about how you would scale up learning analytics and how people have done that around the world. I would talk in more detail about uh, what we're doing at the university and what we're doing in um, learning analytics community exchange. Um, so one of the projects I'm working on at the moment is called an evidence hub and that is bringing together evidence about learning analytics from around the world. Um, we've, we've got four statements. Learning analytics supports teaching, learning analytics supports learners, learning analytics are being carried out at scale and learning analytics are being carried out ethically. And then what we are doing is looking at all the published evidence and seeing have we got evidence for these statements, have we got evidence against these statements, um, and have we got evidence sort of generally on these statements but really with no, no polarity at the moment. Um, we're going through all the journals, we're going through all the conference papers, and what we're finding is there is actually at this moment limited evidence about learning analytics. There's a lot of people doing think pieces, there's a lot of people doing pilot studies, um, but when you come to people who've actually got evidence, uh, that is a small fraction, even when you go to the learning analytics conferences, for example. People are publishing very interesting things, but it doesn't necessarily give us um, a clear view uh, that it's supporting learning and that it's supporting teaching. Uh, so one of the things we're doing with that project is we're then developing, we're identifying the gaps so we can take that back to the learning analytics community and saying, well, look, you're not investigating this area at all. And we're also breaking it down so we're not just looking at higher education institutions, we're looking at what's going on in schools and we're looking at what's going on in workplaces. Um, because workplace learning, um, learning analytics there are only really in their infancy. So we want to see how that can be developed as well. So that's, that's one of the big projects we're working on. Another project we're about to start working on is around um, European policy. Um, so this is one we've been commissioned by uh, Europe again to do. Um, and thinking about how we can advise the European uh, Parliament um, to change things in order to make learning analytics possible. And so one of the things there is around ethics and privacy and data protection. Um, what we found in our work, and as, as was mentioned by a member of the audience today, um, the regulations around Europe are very different in different countries. We have different expectations about what you can do with data, how you can access data and how you can use data. So we need some clarity about, well, what is acceptable, what would be acceptable across Europe, um, what would be acceptable in, in different areas, what's acceptable when you're working with younger students, perhaps you can't um, give their own permission to use the data, how do you go about that? Another thing that's very important is data standards, um, because what we find at the moment is different institutions are collecting the data, but you can't necessarily amalgamate it because they're all filing it in different ways, under different headings, using different terms. Now, if we had a set of agreed data standards, um, which particularly the larger learning platforms could take up, then we could do uh, much bigger scale analytics. We could compare what's going on in different institutions in new ways. So that's another thing we'd like to see taking forward. And we'd also like to see more taken forward in enabling people to use learning analytics, giving them the skills to use learning analytics, and also um, giving them support in choosing learning analytics tools, because it's very easy for a learning analytics tool vendor to come in, give you a really good talk about, look at all these lovely visualizations I can do, look at what you can do with data. Um, and really schools and universities don't necessarily have the expertise to evaluate these claims and to set them in a good context. So they might spend, you know, thousands of hundreds of thousands of euros on a system which isn't what the system they need. So we need some sort of clarity, some sort of organisation, some sort of body they can go to and say, well, how do I evaluate this? What sort of questions should I be asking? 
So these are all areas of policy which we're going to be addressing over the next year or so. So Jim talked about schools of the future. I have looked at schools of the future, but not really in the learning analytics context. In the context of universities, we're in a slightly unusual situation at the Open University because we're a distance um, institution. Uh, so we're looking at a university in the future in a slightly different way to probably a bricks and mortar establishment. Uh, what we'd like to see with learning analytics is tools which can really support learners being made available to learners and for them to be able to interpret uh, what the information which is being given to them very quickly, uh, very easily. Uh, we'd like them to get real-time analytics so that can support them as they're going on through their course, um, so they can adjust their behaviour, so they can make decisions based on um, the evidence that we have, we can share that with them. Um, we're also beginning to see much more integration of MOOCs, of massive open online courses, um, with um, formal education. It's not very clear how far that is going to move in the future. I think, you know, though people are talking about, oh, you could do your entire degree through MOOCs, there are a huge amount of problems with that. But I think we are going to see more integration of MOOCs with formal education. And that gives us the opportunity um, for doing things around A-B testing. So we can split the people on a MOOC into two groups. We can give them just slightly different things and we can tweak what's going on and then we can see uh, which ones work better or which ones um, don't work. Again, this is, this is an ethically difficult area. I think whenever you talk about learning analytics as ethical difficulties, you don't want to give anybody um, a reduced chance of success. Uh, you don't want to feel that half your students are, are getting a, a worse experience. But I think there are more possibilities of doing that in MOOCs and then we can bring what we have learned from MOOCs over into formal education. Um, for the first time, we can really begin to compare what's going on in, in learning and teaching, and we can see what is working and what isn't working. I think in the past, we've had a lot of theory about what probably works and about what probably doesn't. It's been very difficult to produce the evidence um, and sometimes when you dig into things and you look at the evidence, you find the evidence isn't there or the evidence doesn't say what you thought it would do. Um, learning analytics is going to give us the possibility of going a bit further with that, giving us a, a more evidence-based curriculum. Yeah, I'm very optimistic about MOOCs. Um, that, that's an area I do quite a lot of work in. Um, and I can see possibilities for them being integrated within lifelong education. I think what we're going to see in the future is a move away from just doing education at specific points in your life to much more of a lifelong learning approach. So people being um, perhaps working through MOOCs before they go to university to prepare them for university, to give them the, the pre-university skills, so as a bridge, and then we'd see them as a bridge into professional learning. We'd see them as something they can address in their professional uh, career and that might then bring them back into postgraduate education. So not necessarily as the whole of your education, but as a part of your education of keeping people engaged in learning and of thinking themselves as learners so that people don't just spend three years at a university, but they spend perhaps 20 years engaged with that university, coming back, learning with the university, engaging with that community. I'm an optimistic person. <laughs> I enjoy MOOCs.